Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Monday Mentor. I'm Jen Whitmer, and I help teams and leaders solve conflict, cultivate communication, and create empowered teams. And today, I'm really excited about this topic because we're talking about change and possibility. So I don't know about you, but some people are really scared of change. And I have like mixed feelings about change. <laughs> so it, it kind of depends. So today, if you are here live, let us know you're here live. You can, uh, in the comments, and if you've got questions about change and possibility, Carla Howard is your girl. And she <laughs> is our guest today. And I am so excited for her to join us because she's going to be sharing with us all the great things that we have to offer about possibility and what change really is. And she is a change agent and coach and consultant. And we're just so glad she's here today. Hey, Carla, <laughs> welcome. Hey, Jen, thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this call. We had such a great conversation offline talking about what we could share on this uh, Monday mentor session with you. And it's change is one of my favorite topics to talk about. <laughs> Excited to be here. Yes, I'm, and I love that you're live from your she shed. I just <laughs> really want to say that. I just think that is fantastic. I'm up north in Pine Top, and I have a little she shed for an office because the cabin's so small, <laughs> and uh, it's just my little quiet place. So yeah, I love it. I think it's delightful. It's delightful. So one of the things that I always love to start off with is our Monday mentor. Is how did you get here? Tell us a little bit about your leadership story and how you arrived at this place and <laughs> your love of change. Tell us. Tell us the things. Well, uh, in my corporate career, I really probably 15, 20 years ago, started learning about Lean Six Sigma, which is a process improvement methodology. And I remember the instructor threw up a single slide and he basically said, change is hard. People aren't going to like it. You're going to have these six kinds of people deal with it. Now back to the statistics. And I thought, Surely there's more to it than that, right? Surely, surely. <laughs> so, you know, fast forward, I really got into the study of change management, change leadership, and how to create change inside of an organization, which is my corporate superpower. And I led a change enablement office, a global change enablement office, up until three years ago when the company I was working for shut down their any of their ancillary services that just really weren't bringing money into the company, right? That was a service. And so they started outsourcing things. And I had to decide then, you know, do I want to go to work in another corporate environment or do I want to finally follow my own dreams and step into full-time entrepreneurship? So that's what I did. And it is this theme of personal transformation and supporting businesses through transformation. So in my business, I help people go from where they are today to where they want to be in a variety of ways. And the decision to really, you know, step into what I was dreaming of doing was, uh, it just came at the right time for me. I love it. I love also that, you know, you, you had this moment, this crossroads, and you said, what is possible? Could I do this? Could I step into something? And that that's a, I, I think we, many of us have had moments like that. And while we're still gripped by fear, there's also, ooh, what's possible? That could be amazing. <laughs> so I really want to start with what is this idea of what change is? I mean, we all like, well, I know what change is, but frame our conversation for us about the, the relationship between change and possibility. Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like so many people hesitate to live their dream life. It's like they don't really believe that that is truly possible for them and this fear that stops us from moving forward. And, hey, I was terrified when I decided to become a full-time entrepreneur. It, it wasn't an easy decision. And I knew it's deep down it's really what I wanted. And one of the titles I use for myself is Dream Enabler. And I really help people see what is possible. So my belief around transformation and change and really creating our dream lives is this. You have a dream on your heart for a reason. It didn't just magically show up one day and it wasn't meant for you. It is truly there for you to follow. And I think there's this misconception that we have to take one big leap and that's going to get us there. Or 
certain things have to fall into place before we can start. So both of those are fear talking and keeping us from moving forward. It's really those small micro steps every single day, an inch forward, an inch forward, that get us to the place that we learn, we grow, and we know enough to take the next step. You know, as I look back over my journey over the last three years, I mean, it's mind boggling how much I've had to learn and grow and do differently. And I'm kind of grateful that I actually didn't know all of the <laughs> things I was going to have to know and learn because I might have taken the safe route and said, you know what, that's too much. I'm just going to go and get another uh, full time engagement uh, with a with a company and kind of take that that safe route, if you will. So mm -hmm. I for me, it's really all about those small steps that we take every single day and just really making deliberate decisions about what we want mm -hmm. and, and, and taking the opportunities when they show up. I, the, yeah, it's so important that you're prepared for the opportunity. And I think, I mean, as I'm listening to you, it's not so much, oh, I need to know what's happening. I have to have a posture of I'm ready. I, and I, I think the same thing. I goodness, if I had to know all of the things that I had to know to become an entrepreneur, there's absolutely no way that I would have done it. And even yeah. just this past week, I was working with my speaker coach and we were talking about a client journey, which just is helping the people who hire me to speak have a really easy time of it. And I was thinking, of, oh my gosh, all the things that I had to do, like suddenly it was so much and I already had so much of it built, but it was still so overwhelming. We had to come back to well, what's the one next thing. And when I think about change, it's probably really good. We don't know all those things, but what's <laughs> the one next thing? I, oh, that felt so doable. And then we accomplished that and we could move on and to the next one thing. And I think that is such a wise framing of what change is that when we, it's not knowing all the things it's being willing to do the next thing. And it's such a helpful tool. So talk to us a little bit about why change is so important, not only for ourselves, like as individuals, but also in our organizations. Like you said, this was a service they felt like they didn't need, but actually it seems so vital. Why is change so vital? Yeah, I, you know, here's the thing. And I'll talk about the corporate first. When we are making a change, we're doing it for a reason. We've got financial goals. We've got goals within the organization that we want and need to meet. And so many times, you know, we'll executives will sit in a room, they'll come up with projects, they'll come up with initiatives, and then they get a project manager involved who maps out all the steps. The thing that gets forgotten is this. If people do not change the way they work when you go live, you are not going to achieve the goals mm. that you set out to achieve. It really is all about people. And we spend very little time helping people get from the way they work today to being confident, proficient, and ready to do work in the new way. Every single goal that a company has is tied to people making successful transitions. And yet we spend little to no time thinking about what does that path look like and how can we prepare them mm. to be individually successful so that our organizations are successful. So this whole theme of change management and change leadership, here's, here's the thing that people don't understand. It is not about doing more work. And that's the big pushback I get because this is how it's going to happen. We're either going to spend the time leading up to the point that we launch the change, we go live, we want people to do something differently to equip them along the way so that they can be successful and we have a successful go live or we don't and we don't have a successful go live and now we're playing catch up when we should be celebrating. Change management and change leadership inside of organizations is a pay me now or pay me later kind of a thing. We're either going to make that payment up front and invest in people so that they make it through their own individual transformation and change journey, or we're going to go live. They won't know what to do. They won't understand the importance. And we are now going to have to do that work on the back end while executives are knocking on the door asking why we're not meeting the goals set out for the project, which wow. I will tell you is way harder <laughs> than work up front. 
right? Right. Oh, that's such a good analogy of pay now or pay later. And I think there's components of that even for us as individuals. Like if we either put in the the time to think about how we want to change or we we have to change anyway. Like life is coming at us. And yes. so there's got to be some change. So tell it, tell me, talk to me a little bit about that. Like what is it like as a as an individual to create transformation? in our own lives. I mean, both of us are coaches. That's what we're helping clients do. Yes. What is the possibility and change in, in as an individual? Yeah. You know, here's the thing. Time's going to go by whether you make any changes or not. Mm -hmm. And change is going to happen to you one way or another because all of the circumstances around us. So we don't really have a choice as to whether we change or whether our lifestyle changes or whether our personal situation changes because it is going to, that's part of being an alive human, right? <laughs> There's going to be other forces. And so our choice is not whether we're going to change or not. Our choice is what, how are we going to change? What path mm. are we going to go down? What do we want to take control of in our lives and make happen for us? And that is really the thing I think that sometimes gets forgotten. It really isn't a choice of whether we change or not. It's whether or not we're going to be in the driver's seat or we're going to be in the passenger seat or we're going to be in the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because just the, just the fact that you're a living, breathing human, you are going to experience massive change. The last three years taught us that, you know, more than anything. Yeah. So really identifying what is it that you want for your life and and then not getting too far in front of it. So here's the mm. thing. It's if you're a planner, I mean, I'm a planner. I love making lists. I've got multiple versions of planning. One of my biggest struggles is I try to plan too far out in the future. And then by the time I get there, everything's different. So I have mm. to rethink it. So I think just planning far enough out, you know, what is it that you want in your life and what can you do over the next two to four weeks, like very deliberate actions you can take. They're going to get you a little bit closer. What do you want to achieve? I'll say in the next six months and then just reassess when you get there. Do you still want the same things? Did you get the, the results you had expected? And if not, what do you need to tweak? That can help keep it from being just way too overwhelming. Oh, I love that. I think one of the things I love doing with my clients is looking at what do you, how do you want your life to be different in the next three months? And then, well, what does that mean you have to do, like you said, in the next couple of weeks? And then, so like, because sometimes there's just simple things, especially as I'm working with a lot of women leaders, there's things at work and there are things at home. There's like, I, I've got to figure out this damn closet in my house that is just, <laughs> I got to figure it out. Like I can't, and I just keep avoiding it because it's overwhelming. And I really have to talk to this direct report because I'm starting to notice a pattern that is impacting the team. You know, like both of those things are really important pieces of change. And how you go about that is that breakdown of like, oh, where do I want my life to be? That's the dream. And then what's the tasks that are associated to actually get me there? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like they have to they have to connect otherwise you don't get the results that you want and i've i don't know about you like if you ever been if you're listening have you ever been in that space where you thought this is what you wanted and then six more six months down the line you're like oh wait that's not actually what i wanted and and that's is that happened to you i mean i know that's happened to me if you're in the comments i'd love to know if it's happened to you so carla what do you do when you get to that point because i think sometimes when we're like oh this is what i wanted in six months and now that's not what i want sometimes there's still this association of shame or failure that comes there yes and how do you deal with that yeah absolutely i think the other thing that happens is we don't give ourselves permission to cross things off our to-do list enough mm. so you know um first of all the the journey to create your dream life is going to change. I'm going to be more worried about people if, if it does, if it never changes, right? Because yeah. getting new information, new experiences. So it should change and evolve and really giving your per, yourself permission to say, I thought that's what I wanted. Instead of that, it's going to look more like this for me. And 
the thing where I've gotten stuck when I do that is then my inner voice would say to me, well, you've just wasted the last six months then. You just wasted all of that time if you don't keep going. Like you have to finish. You said Mm -hmm. you're going to start. You have to finish. That is not truth. Yeah. You didn't waste time. You were learning. You were growing. It is part of the journey. And you absolutely have the permission to pivot. One of the things that I noticed about six months ago is that my days were full of to do's that were not moving the needle toward my dream life because I made this plan. You know, I put it on every Monday for the next year. I'm doing this. And then every Tuesday for the next year, I'm doing that. And I kept doing all of the things and then I didn't feel fulfilled in the end, nor did I see my business growing in the way I wanted it to. And I really had to stay, take a step back and say, okay, you know, we're six months into the year. What do you want now? That's different. Mm -hmm. Own it, get excited about it and give yourself permission to want something different. And if that's what you want, are all these things that you're doing, getting you closer. And if it's not, take it off the list. Like (laughs) it's like insanity. Why am I keeping on doing these things and not moving the needle? So I think really planning, planning to pivot, you Mm -hmm. know, knowing that you're going to get to a certain place, you're going to learn some things, you're going to pivot, but then don't forget to take the things off your list, right? (laughs) That we're getting you the other way. You know, you can't see the crossroads and go, I want to go that way, but I'm going to keep stepping this way because that makes sense. (laughs) Right. Right. And we would never do that physically, but that is what we do mentally. And I, yeah, it's so funny. I mean, I think about part of my journey that has been the most helpful. I had a coach say to me one time that you're not starting from scratch. You're starting on a pile of new learning. And that was just really helpful that we, because we do, we have that inner voice that was like, well, you just wasted all that time. And it's it's not true, but that is what we hear in our minds. And so it's such a helpful reminder that you're not starting from scratch, but you can't stay over there and try to go that direction. And there's a little bit of fear, I think, with like taking it off your calendar. But once you do it, it's like, oh, there's there's this release of that wasn't right for me. And now I have a a bit of freedom and that comes sometimes with a little bit of fear and bravery to get there, to take it off the list, but to know that I'm going to direct my, my tasks and my energy over here. Suddenly now there's freedom in that direction. I can't believe it's almost time for us to stop. Um, Because I have so many, I have one more question I really want to get to before we jump, because I'd love to know, some people are like, I am all on board with changing me, but I don't know how to change my organization. I'm not the change agent. I'm not the one with the title. So what what do we do in that type of tension situation where you're wanting to see some change, but you're not the quote unquote decision maker? Yeah, I think um, starting with those really open, honest communications with your leader or with leaders in the organization and coming up with a framework that shows you not as someone who's complaining, but someone who has ideas Mm -hmm. on how to make things better. And I go back to a methodology that I teach. It's the calm transformation model where you start with clarity. Mm-hmm. What do you want to change? Why do you want it to change? And, and what's the risk if the organization didn't make the change? Make that case. Mm-hmm. And then you can talk about what the benefits would be to the organization, to the team, and really begin that conversation to get buy-in on your idea. From there, you can begin to build a plan and think about how you actually bring that to fruition. But the step that most people miss is talking about those first things. Specifically, what do you want to change? What would that look like? What would it look like inside the organization? Why and what is the risk if we stay the same? And you think about it from your personal situation. It's really the same questions that you're going to ask yourself as you're thinking about what changes you want to make as you move forward in your career, in your personal life, or in your business? Oh, it's such, it's so, so good. And one of the things that I 
love talking about is this idea of self-leadership. You can't go to the rest of your team and, and say, here's the change I want. If you haven't done some work on yourself to know here's clearly that clarity of what you want and here's the risk of us staying the same. You have to do that for yourself first. Yes. And that's so good. So good. Oh, Carla, you have so much to offer us. Um, people can find all kinds of things here for you. Tell us where to find you, how to connect with you, what you talk about. Give us all the information where we can stay in touch with you. <laughs> well, the, the best place to really connect and uh, start, start a conversation, start that connection is over on LinkedIn. I love connecting with people on LinkedIn. The Linktree uh, QC. QR code that you're showing there is going to show you a lot of different things I've got going on. So um, I do have a get paid from the stage six week program that I offer to help speakers get paid for their value. My next cohort starting in February, you'll find some other services there as well as some free content for you. So we create a free mag e-magazine for kind and ambitious women every other month. You'll find a link to it there. There's all kinds of cool stuff in there. So um, check out the QR code and then connect with me on LinkedIn is the best way for us to start a conversation. I love it. Carla, thank you so much for your time, your generosity and your wisdom. And um, this is and being a great mentor for us today. I, I really appreciate the inspiration and the practical thought that you brought for us today. So I really appreciate it. Gosh, thank you so much. I love chatting with you. I could sit here for the next hour and just talk. I know, so. I know. Every time I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we have to stop. All right, everybody. Next week, join us with Jen Zukowski. I think that's, I'm, I have to look at her name every time. So if I've messed it up, I'm so sorry. And we'll be talking about gratitude and leadership and why that's so important. It'll be here every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So join us every week to have your dose of Monday Mentor. Carla, thanks for being here. Go connect with Carla and we will see you later. Bye, everybody.